Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our Mountain West Men's Basketball Tournament preview show from our Nevada Sportsnet studio. He's Chris Murray. I'm Mike Stephenson. This presentation brought to you by your Northern Nevada Toyota dealers, Chris, as we get set for what could be an all-time great Mountain West Tournament down in Las Vegas. I feel like we got through just the non-conference schedule and we realized this is going to be a really fun Mountain West year. Sure enough, the regular season has played out, and it was an all-time year. You look at the top seven teams in this league, they're all roughly equal in terms of their overall ability, and I think that's what makes it fun seven of the 11 teams in this tournament have a legitimate chance of winning and now certainly some teams playing better than others right now yep. heading into the postseason Nevada tops on this list but this is a really deep conference which should lead to a lot of exciting games of course this will be a Wolfpack leaning show as we get set for the silver and blues run at the Mountain West Conference Tournament but we will talk about all teams we'll offer some predictions and we also got a little feature coming up later on the packs big man in the middle KJ Hines we will begin by looking at the bracket as Chris said a banner season six of the 11 teams with 20 or more wins and we should let you know those Wednesday first round games all three of them will air live right here on Nevada Sportsnet. We'll jump into Nevada's potential matchup, Chris, in a second, but early thoughts as you get a look at this bracket. I mean, it's a difficult route no matter who you are. I think Utah State has a big advantage at number one because they're likely playing Wyoming in a quarterfinal, whereas the rest of the quarterfinals mm -hmm. are going to be NCAA tournament teams playing each other. But when you look at Colorado State there, they don't get a first round by. They're the number seven overall seed. This is a team that was ranked for almost all of non-conference. They're not playing great basketball now, but they are an NCAA tournament team, really regardless of what happens in this tournament. When you have a first round team that's going to be playing in the NCAA tournament in your conference tournament, that means that you are super deep. In terms of Nevada, I think it's pretty favorable if that Colorado State matchup does happen. I think that plays into Nevada's favor. Obviously, the semifinals and the championship game are going to be very difficult, but that UNLV San Diego State game, that's the one to watch out for in the quarterfinal round. Both those teams, uh, you know, playing really uh, interesting basketball, and they just played against each other less than a week ago in that very same building. How about UNLV on its home floor opening? things against a program that made it all the way to the NCAA National Championship game just a season ago. Get your popcorn ready for what should be a heck of a week down in Las Vegas as we dive into the Wolfpack. Chris, a year ago, the script and the storyline heading down to Vegas was much different for this Nevada team, which ended the season with two losses uh, to Wyoming and UNLV. That story much different a year later. Seven straight wins as they head to Vegas, arguably the hottest team in the conference. Definitely the hottest team in the conference. I mean, that seven-game uh, winning streak, that's the most consecutive wins heading into the postseason since 2005-06, wow. when Nevada won its last 11 games in the WAC. It went and won the WAC Tournament Championship at home, got a number five seed in the NCAA tournament before losing in the first round. This year's Wolfpack playing its best basketball ever in Steve Alford's five years, heading into last year's tournament. Nevada was kind of leaking oil. It was injured. It didn't have the depth. This year's Wolfpack is surging. It's hitting the three-point ball. It's got that depth. It is fairly healthy outside of Keenan Blackshear missing some recent games. So you could not ask for more if you were Nevada. Doesn't mean that that's just going to translate into postseason success, but everything that should be working well to have postseason success is working well for Nevada right now. And the pack for the first time in some five years cracking the Associated Press's top 25 clocking in at number 23. That's just an added little incentive as Nevada will take a little number next to its name down to Las Vegas, Chris. Yeah, I mean, it's very hard to be ranked. This is only the sixth <laughs> season in Nevada basketball history when it made it into the top 25. Steve Alford, only the third coach in Nevada history to lead the Wolfpack into the top 25 along with Eric Musselman and Mark Fox. Five different Mountain West teams have been ranked this season. That's also the most in the conference's 25 years. Again, speaks to how deep this league is, how talented this league is. Commissioner Gloria Navarre is certainly uh, enjoying what has been an epic year in the Mountain West Conference. Now the conference trying to make some noise as we dive deep into March. Nevada coming off a regular season finale to remember nearly 12,000 strong packing inside Lawler Event Center for what ended up being a pretty fun game against UNLV. Nevada led virtually the entire way. Rebels were able to snag a one-point lead about midway through the second half. That lead very short-lived, though, Chris, as the pack gets that 10-point win over its bitter rival. And as we said, last year that was a loss in this game, and it kind of sent them on a sour note down to Las Vegas. This team is clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, we don't know if momentum actually carries over to the postseason. I've done research before, and it kind of shows that it doesn't. But all you can do is try and play your best basketball at the right time of the season, which is March 
in college basketball, and Nevada is doing that. It's shooting the three phenomenally. This is a team that did not shoot well for the majority of the season. Last six games, shooting better than 46% from beyond the arc, so that certainly works. Uh, Nick Davidson has really blossomed in the second half of this Mountain West season. If you look at the 350-plus Division I teams from February on, Nevada top 15, according to some metrics. They're playing like a team that should be in the Sweet 16 if they just continue that level of play into the postseason with this Mountain West tournament, with the NCAA tournament after that. There are some very memorable games and memorable wins wins to be had but again you can't slip up at all in this conference tournament because every opponent you play is going to be uh, pretty similar in yes, its overall ability cool. and the ability to go out there and win big games. The magnifying glass will be out on every single possession as the pack and uh, UNLV wrapped up the Mountain West regular season Saturday. The game before Utah State in New Mexico Nevada was watching closely as the Aggies were able to win a thriller at home against the Lobos that clinched Utah State the outright Mountain West championship. So Nevada did not get to cut down nets Saturday. You can bet the silver and blue wants to. Here is Steve Alford setting the table for the Mountain West tournament. Hats off. Congratulations to Utah State uh, for winning the league. Uh, we do also know, um, Utah State, you did not come to Lawler, but congratulations on the league title. Um, but I couldn't be more happy for these guys. They have busted their tail. We lost three in a row, and then we got, we got going again. We learned from that, and then we lost to uh, New Mexico by a basket, a point. Um, and since then, we haven't lost. I mean, they just... They grow every time there's a setback, and that's what setbacks should be about. And these guys have done a phenomenal job of every setback we've had, and there's been very few this year. Uh, they've grown, and nobody's playing any better basketball than we are. The, the team that was playing just as well as we were was the team we just played. Um, Boise was the other one, and we got both of them this week. So we're going to Vegas uh, playing very, very good basketball, and I can tell you these guys, they didn't get cut down nets. Um, in the league, so they're going to be extremely motivated and excited mm -hmm. to play in Vegas. Facts. Mm -hmm. A uh, little bulletin board material early on there for Utah State. Coach is right, though. Nevada gets the win in Logan. Uh, Utah State did not have to come here, and Utah State only had to play UNLV one time as well. Let's transition now. The Pac will face the winner of Wednesday's 1:30 game between Colorado State and San Jose State. Chris. Colorado State will be a heavy favorite in this game, so let's lean toward the Rams and talk about what you said is already a mountain, or I should say an NCAA tournament team. Pack got the season sweep of them, though. And I think this is a good matchup for Nevada. You look in the post, Patrick Cartier for Colorado State, not the most physical big man at the center position. I think Nevada's been able to take advantage of him. Really, this team comes down to three-point shooting. Why was this a top 15 team in the nation in non-conference? They were hitting about 39% of their threes. Why have they struggled in Mountain West play? They're shooting just 31% from three. That's 10th wow. out of 11 teams teams in this conference. We know Isaiah Stevens is an All-American caliber point guard. He's going to play well. It really comes down to those role players. Those role players have not played great against Nevada. Shot just 29% from three in the two games against the Wolfpack. If those guys can step up, they can be very dangerous. But I do feel like if you look at all of these teams Nevada could potentially play among those top seven, this is probably the one that they would want to pick out for a quarterfinal matchup. Pack got both regular season meetings January 24th. It was 77-64 inside Lawler. And then how could you forget February 27th, 70 7774 Jared Lou Cash calling bank in Fort Collins, sinking the Rams from half court. You can bet CSU remembers that. And the old adage is it's tough to beat a team three times in one season. We will have to see what happens. Our Mountain West Tournament Preview Show continues right after this as we take a closer look at a variety of contenders because there are a bunch of them. We'll break it all down right after this. Our Mountain West Tournament Preview Show rolls on, brought to you by your Northern Nevada Toyota dealers. He's Chris Murray. I'm Mike Stephenson. We are looking now at a variety of potential contenders to cut down the nets following the men's bracket inside the Thomas & Mack Center. Hard to look at Utah State and not think they're going to have a chance to do this. They won the regular season, Chris. Danny Sprinkle, as a first-year head coach, inherited quite literally nothing, mm -hmm. and they won the regular season. You can't say enough about what the Aggies were able to accomplish. I mean, that was an amazing shot right there. That's Darius <laughs> Brown the second. He came along with Danny Sprinkle from Montana State. Great Osborne, their best post player, the newcomer of the year in the Mountain West, came along with Danny Sprinkle. So he did bring in some talent, but to be able to return zero points and win a Mountain West outright championship in the toughest this conference has ever been, 
been was miraculous, and it did take some miracles. This team, 10-1 and one in games decided by four points or fewer wow. or overtime. Will that uh, either clutchness or luckiness, however you want to define it, <laughs> a little continue bit in the postseason? <laughs> we will see. I don't think anybody is truly frightened of Utah State, but certainly they earn that number one seed. Aggies are the top seed, and we'll get the winner of Wyoming and Fresno State. That game will take place Thursday at noon. Let's look at Boise State. Uh, the Broncos definitely an up and down year. Had some devastating moments. Had some really exhilarating moments. Leon Rice's team, you can bet, will be ready down there, though. Definitely. And this is uh, a team that really struggled under Leon Rice. Basically, the first 10 years in this tournament, being able to have success. They won it a couple of years ago. Um, we'll see if that will continue. This is a team that doesn't have a lot of depth, but they do have a lot of veterans. They've played in a lot of big games. It feels like they're on a mission to win an NCAA tournament game. 0-9 Boise State in the NCAA tournament all-time. 0-4 wow. under Coach Rice. This is a team that can certainly go out there and win the Mountain West Championship. A potential semifinal matchup for the Wolfpack. That'd be a fun one. Broncos are the three seed. They'll get the winner of New Mexico and Air Force that game Thursday at 8.30 p.m. to wrap up Thursday quarterfinal action. San Diego State is the third team we're mentioning here, Chris. How about the Aztecs getting the fifth seed? But boy, uh, you don't want to bet against them inside the T-Mac or in March at all. Yeah, I mean, if they get a little bit outside shooting, they're very difficult to beat. The defense is still elite. They have the Mountain West Player of the Year in Jaden Ledee. I think teams are learning, let's just double team this guy, make him a passer, make them hit some shots from the outside. They did lose their last two games of the regular season. Not exactly how you want to go into the Mountain West tournament, but still a very fierce opponent, a team that can go out there and win NCAA tournament games. They can certainly go out and win a Mountain West championship as well. And a team that's had Nevada's number in this event, the mm -hmm. Wolfpack 0 one four all-time against the Aztecs in the Mountain West Tournament. So the Wolfpack kind of used to be an oustered by San Diego State. If that matchup does happen between the two teams, that would be the Mountain West Championship game, Nevada on the other side of the bracket of the Aztecs. That it would be. It's the 4-5 game, UNLV and San Diego State. It will be the lead-in game to Nevada's game coming up on Thursday. It is a 2-30 tip-off inside the TMAC. Let's look at New Mexico. This is a team that has everything you would want in a squad, a squad that can make deep runs. They just got to put it all together, Chris. And they seem to not be able to do that, but they also have the most riding on this. For a lot of these teams like Nevada, they want to go out and win a Mountain West Tournament Championship they want to cut down nets and hang a banner, but if they don't, they know they're playing in the NCAA tournament. New Mexico does not. Probably on the wrong side of the bubble. Four and six in their last ten games since beating Nevada by 34 points at the pit. They need to at least get to the semifinal to be comfortable on Selection Sunday. Maybe have to get all the way to the championship game. So they need to win at least two games to feel secure when the NCAA tournament bids are handed out. So a lot of pressure on New Mexico. And again, the Lobos open up against Air Force. That game Wednesday at 4 o'clock. We'll have it live on NSN. Last team we're going to mention here is the team that plays all of its home games inside this building, UNLV. They got an all-star kind of guard, and you can't bet against this team in their home floor, that's for sure. They haven't had a lot of success at the Mountain West Tournament on their home floor, though. I mean, it's not like this has been a huge home court advantage where they've reeled off a number of Mountain West championships. The real thing with UNLV for me, there's not a lot of depth here. Uh, Didon Thomas Jr. was my Mountain West freshman of the year. I think he's a phenomenal point guard. Mm -hmm. uh, Kalen Boone is a very good player. Outside of that, they're kind of struggling to find some offense. Uh, defensively, they can be good at times, but not an elite rebounding team. They also know they need to win this event if they want to play in the NCAA tournament. Just because they had a bad non-conference, they've been very, very good in Mountain West play. We'll see if any home court advantage plays in their favor. Although, if I had to guess, New Mexico is going to have the most fans of anybody at this tournament. Those uh, Lobos fans travel fantastically. The Lobos like to travel. We'll see if the running Rebels can bounce back following that regular season finale loss inside Lawler Event Center and make a run at the Mountain West Tournament. We'll have our prediction and our dark horses coming up a little bit later in the show. But first, as we continue to set the table for the Wolfpack's run in March, reinserting a player who wasn't around last March. K.J. Himes Jr. coming back from a debilitating back injury, reinserting himself into the Wolfpack's lineup. I got a feature with number 42 for your viewing pleasure right after this. Welcome back to our Mountain West Men's Tournament Preview Show here on Nevada Sportsnet. Last season, the Wolfpack would have loved to have had K.J. Hines suiting up in Las Vegas, but the big man's comeback from a brutal back injury wasn't quite complete. It is now. K.J. Himes remembers arriving in Reno back in 2018. It was a lot smaller than what it is now. So was he. Yeah, I probably weighed 195 when I first got to campus. Young, 
Bambi-ish. Now 40 pounds heavier, the Phoenix Arizona product is simply just happy to be suiting up again after missing nearly all of last season with a devastating back injury. I had a discectomy on my L5 S1. My disc popped out and it was wrapped around my sciatic nerve. My calf muscle completely disappeared. I had a muscle in my foot that completely disappeared and I basically had to rebuild. If I lifted up my leg, my foot would basically just like hang. It felt like it was like paralyzed in certain spots. A feeling no college athlete should ever endure. That was the most pain I'd ever, for three, four days. I probably got like two hours of sleep in like four days at one point. Whole leg was on fire. It literally felt like I had a hot comb going down my whole leg. A throbbing hurt, leading Himes to wonder if it was all worth it. I had to have some deep talks with like my parents. I was like, I didn't know if I wanted to risk feeling like that again, but I love this game. So I had to, I had to, I had to come back. Patience and hard work paying off for number 42, with Himes returning to Nevada's starting lineup, his sixth season in Wolfpack Threads. It felt great. It felt really good. It felt like a you know long time coming. That was a serious operation. It was almost, I'd say, 10 months uh, before he could really start training the way a Division I college basketball player should train. I had people always tweeting at me, you know, get healthy, KJ. The people motivated me to get back as well. Inside Himes and KJ Himes slams him with authority. As did the opportunity to play with his little brother Isaac, a preferred walk-on freshman for Nevada, who was in eighth grade when KJ first came to the biggest little city. It's like a full circle moment with him, him being here. Like, you know, when I was a freshman, we were the oldest team in the country, and I was the young guy on the team. And now, you know, I'm one of the old guys on one of the oldest teams in the country, and he's the young guy on the team, and I get to kind of watch him and guide him through it. We weren't planning for that at all. It was kind of like, he gets out, then I go a couple years later, he watches what I do and makes sure I stay in check. And just being on the team this year, it's just, it's a dream come true to be able to play with my brother. And the Himes brothers are likely to have another year together with KJ leaning toward returning for his final season of eligibility. I'm in year five and KJ's been here longer than I have, so if he chooses to come back, which obviously we're gonna do everything we can to get him to come back, um, I think next year could be a huge year for him. It wasn't in my wildest dreams that I would have spent seven years in Reno, but you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. It's maybe the man I am right now. But first, Kwame Hines Jr. is hyped for his first big dance. I've watched two of them from the sidelines, so to finally be able to get to, to taste one for myself, it'll, it'll be great. Well, it's safe to say that length of K.J. Himes was sorely missed last season. It's been clear that he's still kind of working his way into basketball shape throughout this season, uh, but this is what he came back for, these kind of moments. Yeah, I mean, everybody who plays college basketball, they want to play in an NCAA tournament. He's been on two NCAA tournament teams. He missed the first one because he was a redshirting freshman, obviously, last year because of the injury. I think when he steps on NCAA tournament court, it's a different feeling, and he hasn't been able to feel that yet, yeah. despite being in Nevada for six years. So certainly a big piece of this team. He does start, doesn't play the most minutes, but – um, gives them length, gets into you know other people into foul trouble, and can provide some shot blocking. So this might not be the best we've ever seen KJ Himes play. At the beginning of last year, he was phenomenal. Yeah. Maybe that comes next year, but great to see him just healthy and being out there and being able to play. Might get him back next year for a seventh season. How about that? But in the meantime, first things first, the Mountain West Conference Tournament. We are almost done with our preview show. Only thing left to do is hand out some awards and maybe make a little predictions. Let's do it right after this on the Mountain West Tournament Preview Show.
It is almost time to play ball as we wrap up our Mountain West Men's Tournament Preview Show here on Nevada Sportsnet alongside Chris Murray. I'm Mike Stephenson. Chris, you are part of compiling the Mountain West Media Awards, and I can imagine this year was maybe tougher than most to get this uh, all lined up and voted. Obviously, a lot of really good players. Pretty unusual. You see Jaden Ledee winning the Mountain West Player of the Year. Actually, the second straight uh, player from a team who finished fifth in the conference when Player of the Year. That's pretty uncommon. Wow. But I think Coach of the Year, uh, pretty forthright. I mean, Danny Sprinkle did a tremendous job at Utah State and some honors for Nevada. Well. Let's jump into the All Mountain West first team according to the conference's media members. You mentioned Jaden Ledee leading the charge at a San Diego State. Great Osibor from the regular season champ Aggies, Isaiah Stevens, Tyson Degenhart, and Jared Lucas. Hard to argue with that list. Yeah, I mean, Darius Brown, the second, I think, had a good case for being on the first team. He was on my first team in, in lieu of Tyson Degenhart, but Tyson also deserves to be on the first team. So there's usually uh, more good players than spots available. That's the first team in terms of the second team. Keenan Blackshear from Nevada yep. makes it for the second straight season. And then Nick Davidson uh, makes the third team. He's actually the first high school player to make an all-conference team for Nevada since DJ Fenner. It's been a run of transfers getting those accolades, but this is kind of the first time in a long time Nevada's developed a high school player into an all-conference caliber player. Obviously, Trey Coleman, a very good player as well, didn't win Defensive Player of the Year. He did get my vote for that award, uh, finished uh, tied for third in okay. terms of Defensive Player of the Year. Jalen House of New Mexico ended up winning it. That's quite a nugget, though, on the redshirt sophomore Nick Davidson, who really had some tremendous efforts uh, during the Mountain West season for the pack. He ends up on the third team. Chris alluded to a couple of the other awards as we dive into those now, leading with your coach of the year and Danny Sprinkle. What a season at Utah State. Will it be his only season leading the Aggies? We are to find out. Player of the year, Jaden Ledee. Then we got the freshman of the year, the newcomer of the year, defensive player of the year, sixth man of the year, JT Toppin, great off the board, Jalen House, Mustafa Amzil. In that order, how close was this to your ballot? Uh, very close, actually. I had a different freshman of the year. I had Deedon Thomas Jr. And then, as I mentioned, I had Trey Coleman as my defensive yep. player of the year. I did have uh, Asmail uh, from New Mexico as my sixth man of the year. So outside of those little changes, but uh, not everyone has the same ballot. Of course, it should <laughs> mention there was a late vote that came in. Josh Uduje out of Utah State, a co-sixth man of the year. All right, we just got about a minute left. Only thing left to do now is make some predictions. What is going to happen Saturday night at the Mountain West Tournament, Chris? Who wins it? Who's the MVP? Um, and who's your dark horse? Yeah, going Nevada wins it. Jared Lucas is the MVP. New Mexico is my dark horse. They are the number six seed. Uh, here's a fun fact for you. Nevada's never won a conference tournament when it didn't win the regular season title that same season. Obviously, Nevada did not win this regular season title. Finished tied for second. But I think the Wolfpack is playing so well, they're going to come out and win this Mountain West Chris title. is saying this is the year that the trend stops. And actually... I'm going to say it's the year that that trend stops as well. The pack hotter than any other Mountain West Conference team. Give me the Wolf Pack to cut down the nets. Keenan Blackshear on a revenge tour will be your MVP. Not that dark of a horse, but I would not be shocked to see UNLV get it done as the four seed, but a heck of an opener for the running Rebels having to get by San Diego State. Take it to the bank. He's Chris. I'm Mike. That is your Mountain West men's tournament preview show. Only thing left to do is enjoy the games, y'all.